Hey guys, what is up? In this video, we are going to learn how to add fog to our renders inside of Photoshop. So let's start. So what is fog really? Well, in simple terms, in basic terms, fog is a cloud that touches the ground. There are many types of fog depending on the day, the geography, the type of fog. You know, there's fog with rain, fog with summer, fog with winter, fog with smoke. Shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad shrimp and potatoes there's a ton of different types of fog so it is kind of weird when some rendering programs when some rendering engines gives you an, an option to add fog but it gives you a very generic volumetric uh, homogeneous fog not understanding that there is a ton of different um, options to add a fog like in reality like in real life so in this video i want to show you four ways of actually adding fog inside of photoshop but before we do that i want us to study a little bit of fog in photographies in other renders and how actually fog works so it just this isn't just a like a normal basic tutorial on how to add something in your renders okay so here i've saved some reference images between them photographs and renders of how you can apply fog and what we can study and get from um, you know fog in real life first one is photography the thing i want you guys to see here is that fog first of all is not always white or gray it has a lot of colors it has gray it has bluish tones really depends on the context so no two fogs are the same and the second thing that i want you to notice that we are going to apply inside of our tutorial right now is that fog has a grainy look in photographs kind of hard to define so that grainy look that grain that we want to add inside of photoshop uh, is because it exists in real life and here you can see a much more of a volumetric fog from an aerial view but you can see that it has some, has some texture around it as well. If we go to this other photograph of a normal street, you can see how fog helps to define depth in an image and, or also in a render. So here, the fog in the foreground, like in this uh, front part of the image, is very subtle, like it's not very dense, but you can separate instantly, like for example, this tree from this car just, just because of the fog that is in the middle. But obviously, once you get deeper and deeper, you can uh, understand how fog is just becoming thicker and thicker as the camera gets farther and farther away. So as you guys can see, there are different types of fog. There is fog that fades away into the horizon, but there's also fog that fades away up into the sky. So the higher you see into the sky, the thicker the fog is, but in but in occasions this changes. So it's not a general rule. Like there's different types of fogs. If we zoom into the end, we can still define the silhouettes for the car, the person riding the bike in some trees and even some like power lines. So all that detail is very important when adding fog. If we look at this other render from Brick Visual, this is a more classic painter-esque technique to apply fog, where you can see the each levels of depth, each levels of foreground, middle ground, and background that are being separated by this kind of subtle fog that is just kind of floating in the air. One cool technique where your fog can actually grab much more presence is by adding elements in the foreground, like for example, these trees, this grass, this all of this detail, and then adding some elements in the middle ground, but separated with a thin layer of fog. So as you guys can see, we can still, if we zoom in, we can still define like kind of the skylines, the trees are in the background, but the fog is just gently separating each element of the actual picture of the actual you know, image. This is much more of the fog that I'm interested in because sometimes you don't want to make all these foggy renders that always look uh, very dense and a very heavy kind of render. But sometimes you just need subtle touches of fog, like 5% uh, of fog to separate and to give depth to an image, but not to actually indicate that the sky is always going to be gray or that it seems that it's about to rain or that it's, 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 or that it's morning or that a storm is coming, nothing like that. Here you guys can see a very blue sky like on a very clear day, but you can see this uh, kind of like a volumetric sun fog that separates, for example, this whole foreground of the image that is very defined by, whole, by this whole vegetation and this uh, background of the image that has a little subtle, um, you know, white greenish fog to it that kind of gives it this separation and kind of helps you understand that the whole path that this whole bridge that the, these guys are proposing um, is going again with the whole environment so it's it kind of helps you with the composition of your image now let's take a look at our first technique of how to add fog inside of photoshop so here i have my render uh, i 
I've already added some pictures with fog in them. So for example, you guys can see that here, I have many different pictures that are masked in and, and like it kind of comped in so that all the, and all these pictures already had a fog, but I want to add a more subtle fog to the foreground of the image, just so it separates this character right here that we have this person uh, from the whole background of the image. And it's a very subtle fog, but it's fog that is not as dense as this one, but you guys can kind of see the texture in the fog. So the first option is to apply cloud brushes as fog. So let me just create a new layer over here and go to B for brushes. And here I have a set of one, two, three, four, five types of cloud brush. You will start to see how this fog kind of works. Let me just paint it here in the dark area. So this is one type of cloud. If I select the other kinds of brushes, you can see that we have different types of uh, cloud brushes that it really depends on how you apply them and uh, how you use them. Because if we just use them like this, it would look kind of weird and not very foggish. But if you just use them, like for example, in a very low opacity, like for example, 10%, it will start to have that feel that there's real fog inside the space. So as soon as you select one of the brushes, for example, it's like this 800 brush, set the opacity to 10% or, or even lighter, maybe even to, to 5%, just so it's very, very subtle. And you can also not use white as your color over here, I have white, but use the color that is already being applied in the sky. So for example, if we take the, the, the foreground color and try to test it out over here. You guys can see that it's a very bluish kind of off white kind of tone. And if we go even deeper, maybe over here, it starts to be a much more greenish kind of color. So maybe we can use this one, press OK and start painting it in in a very, very soft way, right? So we can paint this in a very soft way. You can even change the cloud brushes and sometimes also vary the, the opacity. So for example, let's put it, let's put some in 10 percent and start painting it in, painting it in again, start varying the size. And if we turn the layer on and off, we can see that there's this very subtle layer of fog being added where we can separate the person from the actual background. One extra step that you can actually do is find the person that you have, which is this one right here, the cutout. And I'm going to press control and click inside of the layer just so I, can, I have it selected. And I'm gonna press control shift I so I paint everything but that person. I'm going to go back to the, the layer that I have uh, my fog in and start painting again, you know, start painting again everywhere and maybe make make the fog a little bit heavier when it just uh, as soon as it gets deeper. And when I press control D and turn it on and turn it off, the person is being just highlighted just a little bit more, which is a good technique that we want to always do. So that is the first way to apply fog using cloud brushes inside of Photoshop. Now let's look onto our second way of applying fog inside of Photoshop. The first thing that I'm going to do is I have this image right here and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to filter, uh, render and go to render clouds. And there's going to be like some uh, noisy clouds that I'm going to have. So if I change the blend mode of this layer onto screen, you will see that I have a, already a foggish look, but it's not applied like inside of the image. It's just a foggy texture that I have right here. One thing that I can do is go to the mask and try to hide it all right. So I'm going to press control I click the mask and everything is hidden. And I'm going to start re revealing it with a soft, subtle brush. You can obviously reveal it, reveal it with, a, with a cloud brush, but I think it would have a lot of texture inside and we already have that texture. What I like to do is go to a soft, a gentle brush and start you know, painting it out with a, with a white brush over here, you guys can see. Start painting it out just in a very, very subtle way, like just like this. And as you guys can see, when, when we paint it out, the the paint already has this fog kind of look right so let me just start painting it in a little bit more uh maybe you know i want it to be heavier when it when it goes towards the horizon and i want it to be lighter when it gets to the foreground because i wanted this part to be much 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 darker so if i turn it on and off you guys can already see how it's coming along for me it's a little bit too strong you could lower the opacity just a little bit and it's already it's all it's also very white so maybe what you what you want to do is create a new layer uh paint it with uh, maybe this kind of bluish tone so you just paint all of this with bluish tone and then apply this layer 
to with a, with the alt key you can apply this layer to the layer of the fog so just like this i'm going to apply it and it's going to it's going to give it just a little subtle tone of color that uh, will make it look um, just a little bit more bluish if you want. And the third way to add fog inside of Photoshop is probably the easiest and fastest way of them all if you don't wanna add a lot of detail inside of your fog. But if you're maybe in a rush, you can use this technique. What I would do is group everything like all of your image into one layer and convert this layer into a smart object. Then you want to go to filter and go to camera raw filter. As soon as you open camera raw filter, you would have an option right here that says dehaze. And it's gonna try to you know, add this little subtle fog, uh, but it's very homogeneous and kind of generic. So this is like if you're in a hurry and if you don't want detailed, very specific fog, but as you guys can see, as soon as I turn this dial to the left, uh, everything gets very, very foggy, even kind of like burns out a little bit of the image. And if I turn it to the right, it obviously burns it much, much more like towards the other direction. So what I like to do sometimes is just add a little bit of dehaze. It's gonna add this subtle fog that if we turn the layer on and off, you will see, uh, you'll start to see this subtle fog that it adds, which is really nice, but I recommend you use it in a very um, soft way and maybe when you don't have time to add much more textures. Our fourth way of adding fog is probably the most used way inside of render engines, inside of you know the ArcViz industry, which is by using a depth map. So a, a, a depth map, not a depth map, a depth map. So once you're in a render engine like Lumion, V-Ray, I think uh, even D5 render, you have an option to export the Z depth or the depth map, which kind of looks like this, where you know the closest uh, the elements to the camera are very white and the, far, the elements that are farthest away from the camera are black. So there's there's this transition from, from very light to very dark. And what it does is af, like as soon as you import this image into your render, like this is the render that I have, and this is the depth map. What I want to do is I want to press control I or invert it just so the values are inverted, right? So that the darkest things are closer to the camera and the farthest things are away from the camera. And as soon as I have this, I am going to set the mode to screen and I'm just gonna lower the opacity and it's just gonna give me this very subtle fog that goes in line with all the elements that I have in my render. Right here, I don't have as many elements in the foreground as I would like. For example, I only have these are very noticeable elements, which if you can see, there is a subtle difference between, you know, for example, this green versus the green in the background, just because of this fog. But if you had much more elements in the foreground, like trees, like, uh, I don't know, grass, people, then you would be able to see this difference of the fog and of this uh, depth map. Some final tips that I recommend is always, for example, use the color of the sky of the color or the color of the context. Don't start with white fog, uh, regardless of the image. So don't start just painting something like this because it's not going to look good. I recommend, for example, taking a sample of the color of maybe the brightest part, kind of like right here and start painting in with that fog or maybe with this kind of color over here in a very low percent opacity. So if I just start painting in a little bit, you know, a little bit with a soft brush, you can see the before and the after. There is a little, a little subtle, subtle fog, but go it goes with the whole image. My second tip that I would recommend is to add a little bit of grain to the fog. So as soon as you have your fog layer applied, like for example, this is a fog layer, I can go over here where it says filter, uh, noise, add noise, and add just a little subtle noise, not that much. You don't want it to be something like this. You want it to be a very subtle fog. So maybe in uh, maybe 0.2, 0.3% of a fog and press OK. And this will just give it a little touch of realism onto the image and onto your fog. Another tip that I would recommend is don't use one layer of fog. So as you guys can see, for example, in this image, I have foreground fog. I have middle ground fog and I have background fog, right? So I have fog separated in three different layers just so you can have much more control over it. If you paint it all in one layer, I mean, the fog is not the same in the background as it is in the foreground. So you want to have this uh, maneuverability of these separate layers because all fog is 
very different when it gets closer to the camera than when it gets farther away from the camera. So try to separate at least in two or three layers you the fog that you're applying to your image. So this was a video I wanted to do for a long time now because I've always been a very foggish kind of person, but I'm trying to step away from it a little bit and try to use fog only in very special occasions and in a very subtle way. So if you guys liked these type of videos, please let me know. Press the like uh, button and subscribe button if you want to know much more about the channel, much more about the new videos that are coming up. And if you want to see anything in specific in this channel, please let me know. Type it in the comments or write me a DM through um, the our Instagram page. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in a next video. Bye. That's, that's about it.